Maccabim Revi'i, four Maccabees, five. The tyrant Antiochus, therefore sitting in public state with his assessors upon a certain lofty place, with his armed troops standing in a circle around him, commanded his spear-bearers to seize every one of the Avrim, and to compel them to taste swine's flesh and things offered to idols. And should any of them be unwilling to eat the accursed food, they were to be tortured on the wheel, and so killed. And when many had been seized, a foremost man of the assembly, an Ivri, by name Elezar, a priest by family, by profession a lawyer, and advanced in years, and for this reason known to many of the king's followers, was brought near to him. And Antiochus, seeing him, said, I would counsel you, old man, before your tortures begin, to taste the swine's flesh and save your life, for I feel respect for your age and gray head, which, since you have had so long, you appear to me to be no philosopher in retaining the superstition of the Yahudim. For wherefore, since nature has conferred upon you the most excellent flesh of this animal, do you loathe it? It seems senseless not to enjoy what is pleasant, yet not disgraceful, and from notions of sinfulness to reject the boons of nature. And you will be acting, I think, still more senselessly if you follow vain conceits about the truth. And you will, moreover, be despising me to your own punishment. Will you not awake from your trifling philosophy and give up the folly of your notions and, regaining understanding worthy of your age, search into the truth of an expedient course? and, reverencing my kindly admonition, have pity upon your own years. For bear in mind that if there be any power which watches over this belief of yours, it will pardon you for all transgressions of the Torah, which you commit through compulsion. While the tyrant incited him in this manner to the eating of swine's flesh, which is against the Torah, Eleazar begged permission to speak, and having received power to speak, he began thus to deliver himself. We, O Antiochus, are, rather, who are persuaded that we live under a divine Torah, consider no compulsion to be so forcible as obedience to that Torah. Wherefore, we consider that we ought not in any point to transgress, rather, in any point to transgress the Torah, and indeed, we, rather, were our Torah, as you suppose, not truly divine, and if we wrongly think it divine, we should have no right, even in that case, to destroy our own, rather, to destroy our sense of the belief. Think not eating the unclean, then, a trifling offense. For transgression of the Torah, whether in small or great matters, is of equal moment. For in either case, the Torah is equally slighted. But you deride our philosophy as though we lived irrationally in it. Yet it instructs us in temperance, so that we are superior to all pleasures and lusts. And it exercises us in manliness, so that we cheerfully undergo every grievance. And it instructs us in justice, so that in all our dealings we render what is due. And it teaches us piety, so that we worship the only one Elohim becomingly. Wherefore it is that we eat not the unclean. For believing that the Torah was established by Elohim, we are convinced that the Creator of the world, in giving His Torah, sympathizes with our nature. Those things which are convenient to our souls, he has directed us to eat. But those which are repugnant to them, he has interdicted. But, tyrant-like, 
you not only force us to break the Torah, but also to eat, that you may ridicule us as we thus profanely eat. But you shall not have this cause of laughter against me, nor will I transgress the sacred oaths of my forefathers to guard the Torah. No, not if you pluck out my eyes and consume my entrails. I am not so old and void of manliness, but that my rational powers are youthful in defense of my belief. Now then, prepare your wheels and kindle a fiercer flame. I will not so compassionate my old age as on my account to break the Torah of my country. I will not belie you, O Torah, my instructor, or forsake you, O beloved temperance. I will not put you to shame, O philosopher reason, or deny you, O honored priesthood and science of the Torah. Mouth, you shall not pollute my old age, nor the full stature of a perfect life. My father shall receive me pure, not having quailed before your compulsion, though unto death. For over the wicked you shall tyrannize, but you shall not lord it over my thoughts about the belief, either by your arguments or through deeds.'